to the National Ministry that teaches you a better way of living. God bless you. If you desire prayer at this time, you can give us a call as the phone number appears across your screen. As always, we have our uh, Better Life Prayer Warriors who just waiting to touch and agree, believe God for your miracle and for your breakthrough. Let's welcome this national and international audience. Praise God. Well, here at Better Life, it's Super Sunday where anything can happen in the Lord. And this is our healing and victory service. Father, I glorify your name. I give you praise, Jesus. I thank you for being so gracious, so good. Lord, allow me once again to speak with holy boldness, but yet with compassion. The anointing that rests on this ministry, I thank you that yokes are, are, are broken, destroyed, burdens are lifted, minds are renewed, bodies are healed. I thank you, Lord, for confirming your word with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I thank you for what shall take place before this service expires. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. All righty. I promise you I'm not going to be long on this message since this turned out to be uh, sermon number two. So as many of you know, I've been uh, ministering for the last few weeks on your purpose God's plan, the process, and the finish. Yeah. And I believe we've successfully established really that every life uh, does have a purpose. Yeah. Every life yeah. has a God-given purpose. Yeah. Now, to simplify it all, we've basically said that everyone in this life, it doesn't matter who you are, has a true divine purpose. And that purpose is attached to God's plan. Because God is the one who created you and he's the one that gave you that purpose. But then there's also a process. And that process, it consists of God's personal path for you in order for you to develop and to grow so that you can fulfill and finish your purpose before you leave this earth. Now, in this service on today, I'm going to somewhat uh, deviate from the series. Uh, those of you who are disappointed, I'll pick it up next week. <laughs> so since today is our monthly healing and victory service, I'm going to briefly, really, not long at all, just remind you that there is a purpose, a plan, and a process for you to live healed and live victorious. Now, I know many in the body of Christ, uh, you know, they believe that from a uh, theoretical biblical standpoint, you know, or they believe it because they, 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 they heard it preached in a church. But the question is, how many of us actually have a revelation or how many of us actually have a personal conviction that I'm supposed to live healed and live this life victorious? Now, I, I, I know we know the, 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 the Bible says some things, and, and, and some of us are, are, are familiar with, with some of those scriptures. You don't have to turn to it, but Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. I will help thee. I will uphold thee in the right hand of my righteousness. Jeremiah 17 and 14 says, Heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Jeremiah 33 and 6 says, Behold, I will bring health and cure. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who himself bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Yes. Many of us know Isaiah 53 and 5, For he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, chastisement our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. James 5 and 15 says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. 
Psalms 103, 2 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, but who healeth all thy diseases. James 5 and 14 says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. 3 John 1 and 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. Psalms 41 and 3 says, The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. Psalms 147 and 3 says, He healeth the brokenhearted. Amen. Matthew 10 and 1 says when he called them out, his t called his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits yeah. to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Yeah. Now I can go on and on and on because the Bible is full of scriptures concerning healing, health, and wholeness. So now for the most part, we know healing is the will of God because we know his word is his will. How do I know the will of God? Through his word. But you have to ask yourself, do I have a revelation? Do I have this personal conviction that healing belongs to me? See, we can shout over the scriptures I just read. But, but do I really have a revelation? Is it personal? In other words, is it so personal that it doesn't matter if I don't see anybody else walking in healing? But the fact that I know, that I know that I know that I'm healed. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. What am I saying? Thank God if Aunt Helen got healed. <laughs> but, but I'm not moved if my mama don't get healed. If my daddy, my sister, my brother, my aunt. Not even if the preacher don't live in healing. But it's God's plan and my purpose is to live here. See, we all have to ask ourselves. See, I, I said it earlier. See, sometimes we can be fans, and I mean fans, you know, we can be cheerleaders for the scriptures. But, but, but do I really believe it? I remember years ago, early on in ministry, uh, at the old church, we used to have a, a Friday night uh, 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 praise services. Yes, Lord. And, uh, uh, and we'd have prayer lines and that kind of thing. And, and some of the people, you know, you try to get them to confess the word, you know. And, and some of them say, you know, and, and they didn't mean any harm. They say, Lord, I know you're able. <laughs> well, his ability don't, don't mean you believe it. You know, because he's able to heal. He has the ability to heal. Don't mean necessarily mean to believe that, that you heal. It's just like saying Oprah has the ability to get all of us out of debt. But that don't mean Oprah coming here to sign the check. But I've got to have a conviction within myself. Yes. And it has nothing to do with anybody else. Whether Uncle Bob didn't get healed or not, I know that I know that healing belongs to me. Yes. Now, what about living in victory? Let me give you a few definitions for victory. A success or triumph over an enemy in battle or war. An engagement ending in triumph. It also means the ultimate and decisive superiority in any battle. 
a success or superior position achieved against any opponent. Now, what does the Bible say? Deuteronomy 20 and 4 says, the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies and give you victory. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 8.31 says, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. Yeah. Now once again, there are a lot of victorious scriptures that we can give. But there's this, this one scripture that literally changed my life years ago. Those of you who have your Bibles, I want to show you. Go to 2 Corinthians 2.14. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says, Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and maketh manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. Thanks be unto God who always, always means all the time. Always triumph. Always win. In other words, we don't lose. We don't lose. One translation says, he leads us and makes us win in everything. Wow. He leads us and makes us win in everything. Now I'm stressing that because I know many of us were, were taught, you know, you win some, you lose some. Am I the only one who ever heard? And people didn't mean any harm with that because that's generally how it kind of seems. You know, they say expressions like up today, down tomorrow. I remember in the Baptist church we used to do this hymn, I'm rising and falling, but I'm on my way. Okay, only a few of us older know. Don't we? You know, so a lot of us were, 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 were taught those things. But that's not God's plan. God's plan is for you to win all the time. To live a victorious life at all times. In every place. Or every season in your life. As a matter of fact, victory is your inheritance. See, then when you know that, then you don't get moved by how situations look. Yeah. Why? Because you know the end result. Yeah. See, when you know victory is your inheritance, see, it might, it might look as if, you know, it don't look like I'm winning. I said this years ago. We don't play four quarters. We don't play nine innings. We keep playing till we win. See, the fight win is a fixed fight. Yes. Yes. Victory yes. is my inheritance. Yes. So I don't get moved by how situations look. Amen. You know. You see, all opposition has been destined to fail. Every opposing force that you face doesn't have winning power. Y'all slept on that one. I'll repeat it because the Lord gave me that yesterday. All opposition has been destined to fail. Every opposing force that you face does not have winning power. You see, the, the enemy, he can never have the victory. See, the only thing you can do is give up your right to win. Yes. Yes. See, remember, the devil's a defeated foe. Jesus defeated him. It's impossible for him to ever win. 
Well, Pastor, then I look like he did. No, don't. You just gave up your right to win. He can't win. He's been stripped of that. This is why I say opposition does not have winning power. So the devil can never have the victory. Only you just give up your right to win. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Go ahead. Right. See, I've learned the only way that, uh, 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 that can really stop living victorious is either ignorance or deception. And I think I've said this before. Whenever you think you're defeated, you're deceived. Doesn't matter what it is. Whenever you think you can't win in this, whenever you, you think you de- I just can't do it, I'm defeated. You you deceived. Yeah. That's deception. Yeah. Because you've been designed to always win. Yes. So to ever think you can't win, to ever think you're defeated, you are deceived. Yeah. And most times. We're deceived because of lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. And that lack of knowledge, once again, it comes into, you know, you win some, you lose some. You know, you be up today, down tomorrow. And when we believe that, we expect that. And when we expect that, we get that. Because that sounds kind of, that sounds naturally right. You up today, down tomorrow. Yes. As if you ju- just don't know. Especially within Christians, you just don't know like, 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 like we bipolar or something. And I'm not coming against that. I'm just only making a point. Or like we confused. Yeah. Yeah. We up on Sunday, but down on Monday. Yeah. Then we all right, we come to mid- midweek service. But then we back down on Thursday. See, whenever you think you're defeated, you're deceived. That's deception. Whenever you think you can't do something, you're only deceived. Because you know the scripture, I can do things through Christ. You know, to think you can't is deception in the life of a Christian. Hallelujah. So, Pastor, if all of this is God's plan for me to live healed and victorious, what's the process? Go to 3 John 2. Third John 2. Many of us know this one. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. And remember, anytime you see ETH at the end of the word in King James, it's continuously. It's not just a one-time thing. Continues to prosper. You know. So now he says your soul, and we're talking about your mind. In other words, how you think is going to affect where you go. We all know uh, Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he, or so he become. Yes, Lord. In other words, you're going to always move in the direction of what you think about the most. Hmm. What you believe, you eventually become. Yes, Lord. See, it doesn't matter who you are. You can't go beyond your thinker. Yeah. Amen. 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 You know. We always be talking about getting to the next level. And I've said for years, before you get to the next level, you're going to have to first think on the next level. So now, healing and victory is going to manifest based on where my soul is concerning healing and victory. 
because I can't go beyond my soul, my mindset. In other words, you can't go where your mind has never been. Because when it says, I wish above all things, you prosper, that's not just talking about financial. Prosper is coming up from where you're at and be in health, but even or according or on the same level as that mindset, as your soul. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So I can't go where my mind has never been. Yeah. Hmm. So healing, living healed, living in victory is going to manifest based on where my soul is concerning that. See, I can never live victorious if my soul, if my mindset believes this up and down thing. Win some, you lose some. See, my life can't go beyond that if that's what's in my soul. <laughs> if it's in my soul that the older I get, my body starts deteriorating, then I won't be able to take my life into living heal. And you know, sometimes folks are justified that, well, you know, you got to have some sick because you got to die from something. Your Bible doesn't say that. Jesus didn't die from anything. You know, people should be say they killed, they didn't kill Jesus, he died. He gave up the ghost. Yes. Amen, amen. Come on, Go ahead. <laughs> so what am I saying? You got to die for something? No, no, you just die. That's even a, a word they call it when they don't really know. Natural causes. No one says when, when, is, when, when uh, well, let providing the Lord tarry you, you want to stay 120 years. That has, something has to be wrong with you. So I can't go where my mind hasn't been. You can only go as far as your soul can take you. So what do I have to do? Quickly go to Romans 12. 12th chapter Romans, verse number 1. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah, yeah. So he says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we've taught this for years. This word renew, it means to renovate. It means like to, to gut out. You know, I like giving the example, if we were going to renew, or if we were going to renovate this room, we would gut it out. We would gut everything out. The only thing you would see would, would, would just be the, 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 the brick, you know. You wouldn't see the carpet, the chairs, the drywall, none of it. It would just gut it out. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So this word renew means to renovate, to, to, to gut out the old way of thinking. See, because outside of God, everything we've been taught, it really has restrictions and limitations. I mentioned it earlier. Uh, uh, we, 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 you know, where, where the older you get, your body starts deteriorating. You know, see, when you don't have the mindset of God, Outside of God, it, it, there's limitations, there, there's restrictions. Yes. See, and what we tend to do, we easily allow past experiences to dictate our future outcome. Come on now. Yeah. Preach, Preach. That's why I got to gut it out. I got to get rid of the old way of thinking. You know, I got, I got to get rid of it. If I'm talking about living in, 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 in healing, I got to get rid of the fact that you, you know this such and such running our family. Amen. Cancer running our family. 
high blood pressure run in our family. And then you can look at it and see that obviously it does. Because grandpa has it. Junior has it. Uncle Billy has it. Cousin Lucius has it. See, all of this, this, this old thinking, we've, we've, got, we've, we've got to get it out. Yeah. You know, because we were programmed. Yeah. See, that's why I said outside of God, everything that we've been taught has restrictions and limitations. Yeah. Amen. Go ahead, now, we talk about old age. I know some folks in their 30s. So, ooh, I ain't like I was when I was in my 20s. <laughs> what? What? But, but you know what? With that mindset, then it carries on. Then when you're in your 40s, I ain't like it was in our 30s. Then let alone you get in your 50s and 60s, you're one foot in the grave. And then we expect that. You know? And we expect things to get worse. I remember hearing a preacher from the pulpit saying this, and I don't come against people because, you know, when you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. That's why we cut off from lack of knowledge. Yeah. And, he said, and he said in a joking way, and folks laugh, you know, because they're like, that's the truth. You know, the older you get, you know, first thing you go, you know, your eyes start going. <laughs> now, let, let's just even take the spiritual side out of it. I know 10 year olds with bifocals. So obviously that ain't that. <laughs> you know, your eyes going, your hearing going. See, because we're used to that. Yes. And that's why I say what we do, we, we allow past experiences dictate our future outcome. Because ain't Helen started deteriorating when she got in her 50s. Come on now. Mm. Uncle Tom started losing his sight in his 60s. Hmm. Then there were some of us who were taught and believe it that you really can't appreciate victory unless you've experienced a lot of defeats. And you stuff like that in the church. Do I need to switch? Hallelujah. You know, and you hear a lot of things like that. You know, you know how you appreciate the, 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 the good times unless you had bad times. And I know it makes sense, like, yeah, that's right. But never think tribulation is the best teacher. For Christians, revelation is the best teacher. Hmm. You ain't got to, you ain't got to depend on tribulating. Amen. See, when you believe that, then you embrace it. I've said this story before. I, I never forget. I remember uh, an older gentleman at the old church. And he didn't mean anything by it. And he, he, it, it, it's not like he was that old. You know, I think he might have been, I think, in early 70s. That's not, not old. Amen. See, the older you start getting stuff, I ain't, I ain't old no more. And he believed this. He believed that, that the Lord had him sick. He, he said it kind of like, you know, I'm sick for Jesus' sake. I got and he believed that. Yeah. And he eventually died. And that's only because that's just a way of thinking. Yeah. I can tell another story. There's an, uh, 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 another member. Never forget. Um... And obviously the enemy messed with her in, in her, her youth because she had dreams and, and visions on, on 
at that time on how she was going to die. And she was going to die by way of cancer. And of course, you know, we ministered to her this and that, and, and, and she'd be, you know, and, 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 and cancer did hit her body. You know, and once again, this is someone who's not old at all. As a matter of fact, at that time, uh, she's only, uh, I don't even know if she, early 50s maybe. You know. And we tried to, you know, and I tried to, and I was a pastor, and I tried to get, you know, pump faith into this, that, and things, or this, or that. But that thing was so rooted in her, in her believing system, that as a result, that's what happened. Gee, pastor, this sound in group money. See, sometimes I got to share real life stories. You know, so now, it's, 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 uh, so I've got to gut all of this stuff out of my mind. I've got to renew my mind with God's will concerning healing and victory. Yeah. And then when I renew my mind, then I'm now positioning myself for this transformation. Because he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. And I can't be transformed until my mind has been renewed. Now, why does it say transformation? Transformation is not just a change. See, because if we're talking about change, you can change into something and always change back. But transformation is like uh, uh, a word metamorphosis. It's, it's kind of like, uh, I, I like to say, like the, the, the caterpillar. The caterpillar does not change into a butterfly. The caterpillar transforms into the butterfly. Because once he's transformed, the butterfly can no longer go back to a caterpillar. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you've been transformed, that's who you are now. Preach, Pastor. Preach. So when, when my mind has been renewed, when I got that old way of, of thinking out of me, those past experiences. And this is not no knock against anybody. But now my, 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 I've gotten that stuff out. And now I've put in what God has said. Yeah. Then it causes a transformation. Yeah. And that's what you get into what I said earlier. Then you have that, that personal conviction. That I'm here. It doesn't matter what was running in my family. That's, that's easy for you to say, no, it ain't. Because I've said it before. Cancer and things has run in my family on both sides. My mother and father. Yes, yes. Both sides. Grandfather, grandmother, great grandmother, aunt, uncle. So you got to get that out of you. Come on, Pastor. Go ahead. Go ahead. Part of me want to apologize because some of y'all just like 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 you're a, a deer in headlights, just like don't know what's going on. I had to get that stuff out of me. And I remember years ago when I, when I was, oh, well, it was about four years ago when I was about to turn 50 and the enemy started trying to mess with me. And try to say, you know, you only got a few years left since your daddy died at 59. Now get that stuff out of me. Especially I remember coming up on my 13th year as pastor. And say, you know, your daddy only lasted 13 years. The devil is a lie. It's 21 in a few months. So you got to get that stuff. Transform. 
transformation. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So when I've been transformed, I can't go back. That's now who I am. Quickly go to Philippians 4 and 8. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on the good report. Think on the, the will of God. Think on what the word says. Another translation says, fix your minds on them. Another translation says, center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, what is this whole renewal of the mind called? Meditation. See, we, 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 we're talking about this, 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 this living, this, this is healing and victory, but living a life of healing. Yes. Living a victorious life. Yes. And that's not to say we're exempt from challenges. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you know what? We win. We don't lose. See, the challenge can't beat me. See, the, the, the only way I cannot see a manifestation of victory is because I gave up my right to win. They like the child that dad, that thing whooped you. No, it didn't. It didn't beat me. See, I can really go deep, but I'm just not sure. Sometimes I don't be sure. See, some of y'all be acting like y'all want it, but then sometimes I'm not sure if I really pull it out. Can you really handle it? You know, they say on TV when, when a disease, you know, that person lost the battle with cancer. Uh oh, see, don't, don't see, I don't know. Some of y'all are right, but some of y'all. You don't lose no battle with cancer. Especially if it's a Christian, just you gave up your right to win. See, not, I, I felt, see, y'all don't know what's going on. Some of y'all reaching and pulling, but some of you, this, if you don't understand, please don't get offended. Just listen to the man of God who know what he's talking about. See, that's why we got to renew our minds. Because that sounds so right. Yeah, I know it sounds right for the world, and that's man's knowledge, but that's not what God says. See, if we're Christians, we are interested only in what God says. Oh, my God, my God. Do I got anybody in here who is only interested in what God says? Not what they say, but what God says.
Come on, let me end it. Let me end it. Go to Psalms 1. Let me get it. I spent too much time. Let me, let me end this. Hallelujah. See, I settled this some time ago. I ain't letting nothing take me out or try to. I'm not going to allow nothing. To get, it, it, I'm going to strip it of any credit. What you saying, Pastor? Well, if the Lord tarries, and after I finished my course, because I still got a long way to go, And when I'm ready to go. Now see, some of y'all look like, you can't say that. Watch. If you be around. See, I've been getting criticized for 15 years. Just by, wait till you get 40 and stuff happens. Got 40, nothing happens. Well, wait till you get 50. Listen, I bought myself a health club membership at 47. And here we are seven years later. Don't you tell me! My God, my God, my God, my God! Oh! Come on, let me in, let me in. Y'all sit, 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 sit. I told God on some things, Lord, if you allow me, I don't mind being the blueprint. And I know persecution will come with it, but that's all right. Thank you, Lord. See, better life, don't you get mad when you're going through, and I don't come and just, just try to, but what I do is try to keep it up here. Because you are stronger than what you think. I would do you a disservice that when you're going through, Bring the word down instead of keeping it up. There is no victory in the basement. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care if the doctor say I see cancer on you. And I come and say, well, what are we going to do about it? What you want? What you gonna do about it? I don't care. Say, Pastor, they getting ready to put me out of my house. Well, what you gonna do about it? Pastor, what should I do? They getting ready to put me out. I ain't got no money. Get you a seed in your hand, baby. I don't know, we're saying this Super Sunday, this almost sounds like grown folk Sunday. All oh, children, maybe you have to close your ears. Maybe this is grown folk Sunday. Oh! My God, my God. Come on, come on, sit, please. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Come on, sit, please. Let me in. Let me, let me, let me in. Let me, let me, let me end this. Psalms one and one. 
Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. You don't have to turn to it. Joshua 1 and 8 says, The book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. See, this transformation takes place when you meditate in the word of the Lord. Specifically on living and healing and victory. You see, as you meditate, then you'll start making your way in living and healing and victorious living. As I meditate, I'm making my way. As I'm meditating on healing and victory, I'm making my way. See, and that goes with any other promise. As I meditate on prosperity, I'm making my way prosperous. As I meditate on deliverance, I'm making my way of deliverance. What does meditation do? It changes your believing system. Oh, glory to God. Changes how you believe. In other words, you may have believed one way, but now as I meditate on the word, I believe this way. See, in other words, before meditating, you may have believed based on past experiences, based on observations, based on how we've been taught. You may have believed that you can't be healed. Or you can't live healed. Or you can't have victory all the time. But I've now meditated. And what I used to believe, I don't believe that anymore. And the thing about it, and this is what some folks do, you know, I'm not coming against my parents' teaching. See, and that's a hard thing for some of you sometimes to, we ain't coming against your parents. Yes, they loved it. Yes, they did the best they could. Yes, they did what they knew. If they have knew this, they'd have taught you. But they just didn't know. So what am I saying? You're not disrespecting your father. Or your mother. Because the things they told you and showed you and it seemed right, but now you're a Christian. Now you're a believer. Now you know what God said. I'm trying to, I didn't win in another era. I'm trying to help somebody with that. There are some Christians who are struggling with what God said because of what their daddy told them. What their grandmother told them. And I know it makes sense. But you're finding out God didn't say that. But I believe if my mama, if my daddy, if my grandma, if they knew what God, they'd have told me. They only told me what somebody told them. Now you know. And your job is to tell the next generation. Man. Tell somebody I'm supposed to live healed. And I'm supposed to live in victory. Tell them from this day forward, my life is a healed life and a victorious life. I got to quit. Come on, let's give God praise. God bless every heart. We'll see you next time. Come on, let's thank him. Let's thank him.